Hello friends, it's the Nubifier. Let me explain why there's been less content lately. When I retired, I hadn't thought that simulation would be such a big part of my life. It wasn't the plan to fully pimp out the studio, and I'd never expected to become a consultant for said simulation gear. But here we are, and this is what's going on. Kyle and I did a turnkey install in Germany, where we also got to visit Monster Tech HQ. That video is linked up for you right now, and today I get to tell you about the installments, plural, at the Atlantic University in Puerto Rico. A very cool idea and a very cool capability. I was contacted by Fernando with a request for some help in outfitting their new purchases. The campus had acquired a pair of fully outfitted sixed off platforms, but it would be better for Fernando to tell you this himself. Atlantic University is a university that specializes in digital arts, interactive technologies, emerging technologies, uh, design, graphic design, cinematography. We have basically nine programs and three masters. Well, these systems are gonna be part of our research initiative. The US Department of Education, they have a mandate to promote the education related to simulation and simulation modeling. Um, one of our programs is video games, video games design and video game programming. So we are providing some energy to these programs by adding um, these machines. These machines are not only simulators where you play games. For us, there's a value in terms of what it means to work in an immersive environment, whether it's game or whether it's uh, some research-related experience. So we're not only using the machines to feel or to be immersed in the experience, we want to be able to measure the human reaction to these experiences. So these are fun toys, but we're very serious about the research that we're doing, for sure. The planning for their install was done in phases. I'm going to quickly go over it. Phase one was complete when the entire plan was defined and decided. This was a series of emails and Teams meetings. We decided on the when and where based on the delivery schedule. We also addressed some small details such as hardware choices, controllers, and preparing the location. Preparation provides time to ask contractors to improve the electrical system or reinforce the floor. Each system is rated to take up to 17 amps peak load at 110. The DD20 wheelbase can take a further 4, a high-end PC and an OLED TV can take a further 9. This would be doubled because there are two systems and Fernando already had a plan for this. Phase 2 is ensuring that everything is delivered on location and then ensuring that the contracted work was done properly and Phase 3 is all about the physical install. For that, work and travel estimates are done, flight and rental hotels are booked, custom parts are made and shipped and this install began for me on the 28th of August 2023, departing Monday morning from Ottawa at 6am en route to Newark. Fun fact, if you get to the Ottawa airport for a 6am flight, you should know that the ticket counter won't even open until 4am and then, because I'm flying to the US, the Homeland Security screening doesn't open until 4.30, so there's absolutely no rush to get to the airport very early. The aircraft suffered some kind of mechanical failure. We boarded and then left the terminal, but during taxi we stopped. We sat on the tarmac for about an hour, turned back, and we were deplaned. After five minutes, they told us that there would be a new plane. <laughs> 40 minutes after that, the second plane boarded and then took off. We landed at 9 a.m. with 40 minutes for me to take my connector, boarding the connecting flight to San Juan, touching down the entire plane started to clap quickly through security and I was shocked to see that both of my bags actually made it because of the compressed layover. There was a short shuttle to Ace Rental. I had told them that I didn't mind if the card was pretty banged up and they obliged me with a fairly beat up 2022 Toyota. Both the front and back bumpers were punched in. The front bumper was basically hanging off the passenger side and you might be wondering why I made such a request, why I didn't mind. And it's because I figured that driving here might be similar to driving in Jamaica, Cuba, or even Montreal. People drive forcefully, specifically during rush hour in the morning. Drivers are not used to hesitation and that would cause more confusion and more accidents. Having a trash rental makes it easier because people can see that you have much less to lose. I found this actually helped to get around. It wasn't some kind of war on wheels because I actually found it extremely pleasant to drive. The other drivers were super nice and they always let me in when I needed to. Anyway, I'd gotten the cheapest car with the most impressive insurance and I was told that even if I drove into the ocean, all I needed to do was call them and tell them where the car was. I was on the road by 1400 the first day. The island is quite small at only 100 kilometers in length. By looking at the map, you might expect the drive to be 45 minutes, but the GPS reads and tells you that you'll be there in 9 minutes. So it's always important to look at the scale of 
Google map for context. I went looking for my hotel, Hotel Ficus or Ficus. It had a very good rating on the web, but I was confused when I was trying to find it. Hotel Ficus is the fourth floor of a functioning hospital. I don't read Spanish, but I do know what a hospital looks like. Ambulances, helicopters, and doctors. Imagine driving to where the GPS tells you and you're obviously in the wrong place. A hospital, not a hotel. Confused, the security guy was trying so hard to help me. I say Ficus and he points to the hospital. I look at him with my best frustrated face. We do this for about two minutes and eventually he has me get out of the car and walks me inside. On the elevator door inside the hospital is the word ficus. <laughs> Hilarious. And I'm shocked when the doors open on the fourth floor and there's carpet, a service desk and everything else you'd expect from a hotel. You can tell that the floor was at one point a hospital, but they tried really hard to make it seem less industrial and it was exactly what I needed. I hit the sack after dinner and I was ready for the next day. The next morning I got ready. I called Fernando and he got me into a parking lot on campus near the sim building. I unloaded the tools and parts and it was right to work. They got a full set from Cubic, a pair of QSS 25s, each with a DD20 wheelbase, Cubic pedals, the shifter and the handbrake. I'd never seen these parts in person and it was nice to finally use them. They seem legit and it's cool to have a motion system with all of the running gear in one piece of software. We released each of the systems from the Saran Wrap. Kyle probably still has nightmares from the Saran Wrap from the last install. I began to remove the installed triple screen mount from each of the systems. They're going to be using a wall mounted TV and VR for now, but the option now is always there to add the screens if they need that. That prep work took about two hours. I was able to install the casters, so we were ready to remove these from the dollies. What a pleasure to have these shipped from Poland fully assembled. This is impossible for most locations because it simply won't fit, but here at the university the corridors are wide and they have a custom glass door installed in the lab. Attaching the seats chewed up another two hours of my morning, I was now at the point where I could power up for the first time. Milton had ordered two fully customized PCs for the lab. 13900K, 4090s, 64 gigs of RAM, 2 terabyte SSDs, pretty much the top spec that you can get. The cases were custom painted and signed, they looked sick and were ready for anything. TVs would be added later, so for testing we did use a pair of 32 inch screens. It was funny to see a gaming system, a PC at this level in an academic configuration that was prompting you for passwords from a system IT manager. I was able to perform an initial test using my laptop. Milton installed all of the drivers in Steam and then we installed Automobilista 2 and Microsoft Flight Sim. Automobilista 2 has a wide range of cars and tracks to test. It has realistic graphics, VR support and full support for 6 DOF. They're probably going to get dirt too, and I think they were talking about getting something a little bit more casual for just testing, like Forza as well. Day one ended with no major issues and I was on schedule. I was off to Home Depot to buy a pair of 19mm sockets. I would need these to lower the system off of the casters, and I would leave those with the system. Day two begins at 7.45. This was now Wednesday. I would drill three pairs of holes into the floor on each system. These holes are where I would attach the custom brackets that I prepared in Canada. Measure three times, drill once. Chopper left was made for Verpal Collective. Throttle left was made for a Thrustmaster Warthog throttle. Joystick right was for a Thrustmaster Warthog stick and throttle right was for a Thrustmaster TCA Boeing. The middle spot was set up for a Verpal CM3, 200 mil extension and a Warbird grip. This gimbal was customized into a dead stick for helicopter. We had ordered a second set of pedal plates from Cubic. This allows them to quickly change between pedal types without needing tools. They have a set of TPR from Thrustmaster and a set of Verpal Torque pedals for the helicopter. Fernando asked me to prepare one system for flight with the TCA Boeing and leave the other configured as car. Changing completely between the setups in the future should take about 30 minutes and they have a locker to store all of the unused gear. There's a USB hub attached to each side of each platform and the USB extension cords are there ready to connect to the PC. Tripping over a wire by accident would simply pull the wire free from the USB hub with no damage. The hubs allow for an easy swap with wires quickly zap strapped securely. I measured out the midpoint of the room for the systems and marked the floor. Now positioned and lowered, I removed the casters, storing these in a trolley. Things were looking great, I was on track, and I left for the night with flight sim downloading. Day 3 began on schedule. The day before, I was able to confirm that everything was working at 100%. Today would be all about tuning some settings, doing bindings in preparation for a demo with the university staff. These are not for play, and I got a general idea from discussions why they were here. Research and being able to test people's reaction to certain situations. A second goal was said to be being able to build a game from zero in Unreal 5, and then using the supporting SDK with Cubic Manager to make that new game move the platform. 
When combined with VR, the university is prepared with a powerful and robust system to test and research. A beautiful secure room, temperature controlled with lots of natural light. For the demo and the handover, everyone got a chance to drive. I explained how all of the performance tabs are adjusted and that it's okay to turn some down to 80%, but that it might be normal and okay if they want to put more emphasis on yaw in rally or flight. This continued for the rest of the day. Everyone seemed excited and happy to finally have their lab operational. Fernando had said that this process began all the way in November 2022. He was specifically happy with the results. A quick cleanup had been done. My tools and camera gear were packed up into the war machine. Fernando received a file folder with all of the invoices, manuals, and test sheets for the two systems. I gave him the traditional resin Nubifier brick and a Nubifier shirt, and it was themed this time with the Puerto Rican flag. I was ready to go, but someone that day had mentioned ceviche, and that would be the next stop. I had never had it, and Fernando said that he knew a great place. It was nice to talk over dinner, and I confirm, fresh food prepared by people who know how to make it, authentically, is always the best. Delicious and job done. My flight home was the next day at 1pm, shower dressed and packed on the road. I was able to drop off my rental with no issues, a shuttle to the airport, a flight to New York, a quick flight to Ottawa. So that's it. Another great trip and another successful install. Each time we do one, it becomes easier to be better prepared for the next one. Lots of moving parts to get it to work well, but it's so satisfying when it comes together like this. A special thanks of course to Fernando and Milton at the university. Part of me wishes I was younger because the program that they're building seems to be on the very cutting edge. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. If you liked the video and found it entertaining, you can help by linking it to a friend. If you want help planning your own system, contact me. It looks like the next install will be in the southern USA at the end of October. Both Kyle and I are slated for that trip, and I love making these trip videos for the channel. Sim safe. See you soon.